recording. Well, first of all, con congratulations with uh, two nominations for the Blues Awards. Oh, gee, you know, um, I really appreciate that. This is all uh, kind of new territory for me. And um, I really appreciate that anybody's even really listened to the record and they enjoyed it. And uh, <laughs> this other stuff is just, uh, you know, it's very exciting and things. It is released now two weeks ago, um, but recorded quite a while ago. I thought last year, 2020. Yes, already. sir. It was like right, right before the uh, pandemic kind of started. Uh, we, we had gone to Grace, Greaseland and uh, recorded it. I was going to put it on my label, you know, but um, it didn't turn out that way. It's wonderful, you know. Um, you do, yeah, well, you have now uh, published on Alligator Records, which is a yes. very distinctive and a uh, record label with a long, long history. Yes, sir. And of a lot of lot great artists. Is the sort of pat on the shoulder for all the work you did to have a record label as Alligator Records now? I'm I'm really uh I'm really uh honored that they would even think of it. You know, um I never saw myself being on that label just because I was so eclectic and things, but really um I'm thrilled, you know. It's the best things happened to me in 65 years. What what does it, what's the difference between your own label and Alligator Wars? What did it do more for you? Well, um, if it was on my own label, I would just basically uh, be taking it to the gigs and um, selling one or two here or there. And, um, <laughs> you know, maybe somebody would play it every now and then at three o'clock in the morning on a college station or something. And um, I probably wouldn't be talking to you, you know, right now. So it's like they've uh, they've really uh, uh, given me all these uh, platforms that I can show my thing. It's like they, you know, it's like I, I, I'm being played on stations and things that it hasn't happened. So it's really um, it's like night and day, really. I mean, the uh, the other way that it was and the way that it is now, it's, it's you know very beautiful. Um, back to the record, Raising Cain, but it's called. It's your 12th record that you've been recording. And I see a lot of different song titles on it. I just listened it before I uh, set us interview up, and it, it's an absolutely full sound. It's perfectly mixed. And uh, start with the beginning. If you have thinking about new songs, how do you create those songs before you uh, go into the studio to get Anderson? Um, what happens normally is like I might get a germ of an idea. Uh, I'll be in, in, in the house somewhere and, and I'll get a germ of the idea and I'll just go to my little uh, studio area and uh, make a, just a quick little demo. You know, it just takes maybe 10 minutes to make it before I forget whatever the little idea is. And I'll, you know, I'll just try to capture those and, uh, and then get back to them and, and give them some time and, and see. But You know, I feel like that's catching lightning in a bottle if you get like a little idea that you think might be something to get it in a jar before it changes or something, you know, because it happens so fast how it, it can mutate into some other thing or something. But that's how I basically um, I'm always uh, kind of open to if an idea comes like that, I'll just go and do that immediately. And then, you know, every now and then there'll be like a thing where I have an idea that uh, just was very premeditated, but that's only been in this last record that I've ever done anything like that, where I sat down and said, I'm going to try to write this right now and then actually have it happen. You know, because normally when I would do that, it would just, nothing would happen, you know, but on this particular recording, um, when I was writing these tunes, it just kind of flowed out and it was, um, I could feel that they were different than other tunes that I've written. Uh, I don't know if it's because I'm older and I, I'm doing it different, but something, you know, uh, change for the better kind of with the stories i think and just the forms is it also reflecting on the lyrics that there's more experience in it or is the, the themes of the song still the yes, same sir. in what yeah. in what way well just you know um when i was younger uh i wouldn't have probably been talking about a lot of these things you know and uh Uh, you know, I mean, I, there's a tune on there that says I was born on this date. I did, you know, and uh, I really had a problem with working that out in my mind to put this on the record. But I feel like at 65 years old, 
I can say that, yes, I was born on this day. And it basically wasn't about me as much as it was about my parents and my home and how uh, beautiful it was just the way they uh, brought me up and uh, their loving kind of hearts, you know, rubbed off on me. And so I was, you know, just writing about basically my parents. Um, if I'm correctly informed, uh, love of the music is also brought to you by your parents. Yes, sir. I mean, they um, they always, both my mother and my father were always just big music fans, very eclectic. My mother could go from Frank Sinatra to like Country Joe. I mean, it's like she really was eclectic, you know. And uh, back in the, um, like, say, 1967 through like the Vietnam years and things, my mother worked at San Jose State University in the cafeteria. So she was on top of what was happening even more than me as a kid was. I mean, she's the one that told me about Michael Bloomfield. I knew nothing about Michael Bloomfield. And, you know, I, I was I was pleasantly uh, surprised at how great he was. And yeah, so I was just really lucky. My, my father and mother were just uh, full of music. They loved it too, you know, and it was always in the house. What a coincidence, uh, just a week ago and, um... Uh, television here in the Netherlands, there was often Belgium to be exact, was a documentary about the blues and Michael Bloomfield and how important he was also for the uh, the colored blues artists who gave them back oh. the attention that they well rightly deserved. Oh, yeah, uh, you know, he was like a uh, never knew a that. Scholar. Well, you know, he was amazing because he was like a scholar, you know, he knew about other types of music and he knew about these gentlemen and uh always would let people know about, you know, Sleepy John Estes or whoever it was, you know, he was like a, he was very well read when it came to what he played and what he knew. And it was always uh, um, really eye opening to hear him talk about things because it just always made me feel like, geez, I have so much music to listen to yet that I haven't even heard of these things, you know? Oh, that's what we always say on the radio. We have maybe 40,000 blue CDs on file. And there is even more that I don't know that I yet know. So there's always to be some yeah. education for me. It's amazing, huh? It's a good thing. Yes, sir. Um, how was Chris self? We, we hope to see you live on stage on the Holland Blues Festival uh, last oh. year, but it is it's going to be 2020. 2020, yeah. 20. That's what it is. Yeah. Still waiting was, next year. Yeah. You know, because I really had beautiful times when I got to go to Holland and uh, people were so nice and receptive to what we were trying to do. And, um, you know, when you're that far away from home and you get that kind of a um, response and things, it just makes you feel like, um, you know, just really wonderful. If you were in the States, I sometimes came across some video footage and it's always a jam or... Uh, where you were maybe with Joe Bonamassa or something else, but it's all this. People like to jam with you. You can't surprise you. Is that something you ask for or is it oh, no, you know, organic um, happening on stage? Yeah, just um, if, you know, if somebody, normally if I go see somebody play or something, I don't really want to go there to sit in with them. I want to just listen to them. And <laughs> um, when these things happen, it's like it, some of these people I, I love very much. And if so, if they, say they want me to come and do it, I'll do it, you know what I mean? But I, I feel like they, they don't really need my help, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it could be fun for you, you say. I'm, oh, it I'm... is It is. It is beautiful. It's like anytime you play uh, music with another human being, there's little things that are going to happen, or if they don't happen, it turns out it's not like as memorable. But normally you both have to kind of really pay attention, and it's almost like making love. I mean, after you do play with people you're bonded with them i think in a, in a way that you wouldn't have been bonded with them before and it's it's special you know i mean when i go to europe and i play with bands there the bands that i play with it's because i'm i'm not with my band and these guys take me in like mother's arms and they do everything they can to make it beautiful and it's like you know uh when this thing happened i felt like maybe i'll never go to europe again and uh, just the thought of not being able to see these guys or play with them Again, really, I mean, it was just crushing my heart because uh, it's a beautiful, I mean, that's one of the most beautiful things that has come out of me playing this piece of wood is that <laughs> I've gone to places that I wouldn't go unless I was in the Navy or something, you know, and met all these people 
that are wonderful. I mean, just, you know, that I wouldn't have known. And I feel like it's just gifts that fell out of the sky, you know? I think traveling and see other people, other cultures is also um, humbling, but also rewarding. And it, it makes your mind opener than it is if you stay oh, in one place. It's amazing. And they take you to their home and like, introduce you to their families. And I mean, it's just, it's special stuff to me, you know? Um, Chris, the um, producer was Kit Anderson. Yes. You worked with, you worked with him before. And yeah, I've known him is, for a while. It is more than just easy because he's also situated in San Jose, where you live, if yeah. I'm correct. Yes, sir. And, you know, the amazing thing is that, uh, you know, when he started uh, recording in his home, you know, I don't think he was thinking of it like this is a studio, but he did great things from the beginning. And uh, I think he is at least uh, 50% of the reason that this record sounds the way it does, because... Uh, he knew exactly what I was talking about when I would say what I was trying to accomplish and he would be right on this thing, you know, uh, and he's always like that. He's very uh, selfless when he does these things. I mean, he put a lot of love into my record that he, he didn't have to do. He could have just said, we're off the clock now. I'm done. But, you know, uh, he's very special like that. And I mean, he can play any instrument. So uh it's just really uh, always just an eye-opening experience when I when I do anything with him because he just amazes me every time and I think I know everything about him, but there's always something new. I mean, he's just a he's an incredible guy. That means you also receptive for her, his ideas in the song. Oh my God! You know, I use him as the barometer when I would take solos because after I take one or two takes, I don't really know anymore. It's like I, I'm thinking now, and and so if he said. Yeah, that's a good one. Then I would go with that, you know, because I trust what he what he says. Because after I maybe play it one or two times, now I'm thinking and it's not going to be as fresh and organic, you know. That's all more what I'm interested in, the creative process behind the song, you know. When do yeah. you know a song is finished, for instance? Right. You know, it's, and it's, it's funny because when I was younger, the first records that I made, I was like, if I could find some rhymes that work... And then I put some solos in the middle of that. It wasn't as much <laughs> stuff to it. You know what I mean? It was, I was, and that was the best I could do then. And I was really trying to do as well, you know, as good as I could. But, uh, and I think it's just living more has made it more that like when I write something, there's more in there that I'm talking about than just this one thing, the girl or whatever it is, you know, there's more personal things in there, you know, that, not like a diary, but just that people might relate to, you know. Yeah, and I also noticed, and I didn't know that before I dived into the the liner notes of this uh, CD, is that you played uh, piano or, or keyboards on a couple of songs. Even the last one, the Space Force, that's with yeah, a clavinet. Yeah, yeah I played the clavinet and uh, the Wurlitzer and stuff. It's just that I love Ray Charles and I love Billy Preston. And um, that tune was a tune that I was doing at my house just for my own kind of entertainment of a tribute to Billy Preston, but not with cover tunes, but with tunes kind of in the style that he plays, you know? And then it just turned out the what we were recording, they were kind of funky. And I said, this could fit. And then Kid Anderson said, I have the Arp Odyssey that he used on Space Race. And I go, you do? So then it was like, you know, it was like a <laughs> wildfire that took off, you know? I was curious where the, where the song title came from. So you answered that one for me. <laughs> I thought it's a new space for it. Trump was adding. Well, the, no, you know the name of the, the name of the song uh, that I, that I I wrote when I wrote it was called Mr. Preston. It was like a thank you to Billy Preston. And then when Alligator folks got it, they thought that it was a cover, and so they thought it was the Billy Preston uh, Space Race too, or something, because they thought it was it was it was a, I was doing a cover, and I told them that was original. And so they put it on the record. I didn't think that would go on there for sure. I, I thought that would, would not end up on a record that they would release. So I was really kind of pleasantly pleased by that because uh, it was really fun to make. With my, This is the first record I made with my, my regular band that I play with live all the time. So to have those fellas on the record was beautiful. And then uh, to just have this thing break out just out of nowhere and then record it. And then, you know, they just played with so much love and stuff on it like they always do. And so it was just a blast, you know. I mean, it was two days of just joyful fun, really. And then came the COVID pandemic, and you have to wait a yeah. year before you could show it to the world. 
Uh, you know, and uh, it's just to um, one of these things that you can't ever even, you don't even know what to say, but uh, I think what the the worst part of the whole COVID thing was just the fact that you, you can't see people that you know and love, you know, it's just, you, you don't see anybody. And, uh, you know, it just gets to the point where uh, you're almost in tears because you miss just interacting with your loved ones, you know? So it's been a learning curve for sure. Then you did some live streams in between, or is it, isn't that your thing? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, for me, it was very difficult because no people are there. And uh, I just look like somebody's holding a gun on me. I'm just, you know, after the night tune, I'm just, you know, <laughs> I just, I don't know what to do. There's nobody there to kind of interact with, you know? Well, that, that's... I, really to, to get used to. Oh, but that's, that's... When you're normal playing on stage, that's some of the charm for me because when I see you on stage and I didn't have the pleasure of seeing your life yet, but that will come, is that I'm seeing an uncle playing on stage mm -hmm. who teach you everything you want to know about the blues because he can do anything and he will do anything on stage and it doesn't show, it doesn't cost him any energy That's it looks so easy. I'm wow. probably it isn't easy. I I know, but it looks so easy. You know, um, I I like I, I started trying to play the guitar when I was eight years old. My father showed me the first thing I ever learned on the guitar. And um, uh, he told me then it's just like baby, if if you don't feel it, don't play it. So I always approached it like if I don't feel it, then I won't. And I always uh, just. Uh, played with my soul open so like I, I would my emotion would come into it as well you know and uh, uh, since I was a little kid that's how I always did it and um, I feel like that's uh, one of the great things is that, that I'm just that's all the way I've always approached it just not like it was a job or looking at my watch I try to <laughs> I try to go there every time and you know get to a place that like somebody else might feel it too you know I think that's the way to approach it. And uh, I spoke to some great blues guys and I always ask a simple question and I ask, what is blues? And almost anybody says, everybody's saying, it's the feeling. If you feel it, it's the blues, no matter what it is. And, you know, even when I was a little boy, my, my father had all the records and, uh, you know, he took us to see everybody like all the time. We never missed B.B. King or Ray Charles when they came to uh, San Jose and, Uh, it was like he didn't push it on me, but uh, I just found even when I was little that I was gra I gravitated towards what I was hearing on the records. Like, you know, I mean, uh, it w w being a little boy, like, I mean, when I met like Freddie King and Albert King and things, I was like 17. And I mean, they were like buildings to me, you know, and uh, <laughs> uh, just the, 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 the opportunity to meet them under that kind of situation where they're in their element and uh, I'm just backstage and my father was there and, It was just, uh, for me, it's etched in my soul, those those meetings and how beautiful it was just for me as a young boy to like, you know, have them share with me anything, you know. You spoke to some of the giants and did they give you tips that you still uh, cherish at this moment? I, I do. You know, uh, Albert King was like, um, he was so uh, very kind to me and like he brought Otis Clay to see me one night like and just you know and they said in Memphis he doesn't really do, I mean I, I've seen him with other guitar players he just tried to crush them like bugs you know and uh, I was uh, like uh, I opened a show for him and they they were asking if I could play with him and he was like no and I go don't make him mad because I, I love I don't want to play so then we start playing our set and I can I can smell the pipe smoke he's standing right here by <laughs> me and he's going mm -hmm. and I'm just like you know And so uh, it turned out that he became my friend. And uh, I mean, I still pinch myself to this day that like, it was like that when I would go to Memphis, he would come and see me every time. And he went out of his way to do nice things to just show me that he liked me. And, uh, you know, it's like when he passed away, I couldn't really listen to his records for about two years because it would just break my heart, you know? And that was an, another example of somebody who has a very distinctive style of playing. Oh. God, you know, I mean, when I saw him as a young fella, I was so blown out by the just, I mean, he would, when I saw Freddie King, it was like a bomb blew up. I mean, he was sweating and he was, 
And Albert King was standing there with his pipe and, and not even like really seemed to be breaking a sweat and just totally demolishing things. And it was like, wow, it was so zen, like, you know what I mean? He was just so calm about it. And it was beautiful because uh, and although for like a 17 year old kid to see him playing upside down and bending it, it was like, you know, I almost had to get counseling after that, but <laughs> he, he was just fantastic, you know, as a person and as like a, um, a mentor. And he, he took me one time at BB King's club and sat down for about two hours just saying, now don't sign this and don't do this. And, you know, I mean, he was just, you know, he, things that he didn't have to do, you know? Well, well, there's always, always good to have somebody on the inside to, to show you the ropes. It's, you know, and it is a tricky slope that uh, this whole musical world is, you know, just, uh, but uh, really uh, I've had so much joy playing for people and uh, I just, uh, I just love that. I'll look forward to doing more of that because uh, I think that's what I like the most is uh, just playing for other folks and meeting people, you know. It's, How is it I now in nice. San Jose or in the San Francisco Bay area? Are there, uh, is the live music at this moment possible? Well, you know, they're starting to kind of um, head that way. But I always, uh, after the first two times, I'm like hesitant to go, yeah, here we go, because, you know, it just seems like any little thing could derail that idea, you know? So yeah, same. I, I, I hope for the best, but, you know, I don't like, you know, count on, so I'd be crushed. Because, uh, I mean, it's just, this thing is, is more complicated than, uh, just, you know, um, a it's like it's over. And I mean, now, you know, you hear about this one in Brazil, it's stronger. And, you know, I just, you know, I just really, I pray for the best because uh, just for like people just to be back together and just do, uh, not maybe it'll be back to normal ever, but close to that would be wonderful. Just, you know, miss it. I well, hope it does. I, the good thing is in between, in, before it is, so far that we can enjoy live music we have your record to enjoy it and we're gonna do this on this radio show thank so i'm so. gonna thank uh, thank myself for uh, having the time for us in the oh, middle of the night of in the late afternoon in california <laughs> yeah but you can wake me up in the middle of the night to do this it was an honor talking with you thank you for everything huh no thank you for uh, having the time and um, i will email uh, tim when the show is on and so that All you right. have the links and can do everything you, you want to do with it. Your name is Rob? My name is Rob. Blue Smooth Radio. Hey, I really appreciate